Hello and welcome, I'm Elsa Gillis. For weeks now, we've been showcasing the city of Charlotte and everything it has to offer. And if you look at how fast the city continues to grow, we are clearly not done yet. He's the brains behind some of Charlotte's top restaurants, and now he's sharing some of his trade secrets with the rest of us. The one thing Chef Bruce Moffitt left with your 704 that's changing the way we and many others eat. And an underground movement is sweeping Charlotte's sports scene. The idea that was born over a round of drinks that completely transformed the city's attitude about basketball. This is your 704. People in Charlotte who know good food know Bruce Moffitt. And now the rest of us are getting to know the chef and restaurateur now that he's released his first ever cookbook. I sat down with Bruce and asked how he's managed to charm Charlotte's food scene. If you're a foodie, no doubt you know the name Bruce Moffitt. He's the guy behind some of Charlotte's most respected restaurants. I have to admit, I was a little starstruck to sit down with him, but I quickly learned this big name chef and restaurateur is a pretty laid back and humble guy. How do you like to be referred to as? Chef Bruce? Bruce. Bruce? Just Bruce. Bruce. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Originally from New England, his move to Charlotte just sort of happened. I had a situation where I lost my job and my girlfriend all in the same week and came down to Charlotte and one of my best friends from college uh, talked me into buying a pizza place, which seems like a smart, <laughs> rational thing to do under those circumstances. So we ran this pizza place, had absolutely no idea what we were doing. But it wasn't a total bust. They eventually sold the business and broke even. And that's when Bruce learned this crazy business was for him. I just realized that, like, wow, this is, this is, I love going into work every day. I love just putting my head down and cooking. What I decided after that was to kind of go figure out how to be able to do that again, but be able to do it successfully. After culinary school and learning the ins and outs of the biz, he opened Barrington's, an intimate fine dining spot. Then he was inspired to open a small plates restaurant after a visit to Chicago. My wife said, do you think this would work in Charlotte? And I said, absolutely not. But this space on Montford Drive just spoke to him, and here came Good Food on Montford. And if you've ever wondered what's behind the name, here it is. I went over to the coffee shop next door to Barrington's, and the barista said, you can't open a, uh, a restaurant on Montford. There's no good food on Montford. There never will be good food on Montford. So I said, just to prove you wrong, when I open it, I'm going to call it Good Food on Montford. And the food is seriously good. After that, he added one more to the list, Stagioni, serving up fresh Italian fare in a gorgeous villa. More than anything else, I'm spatially driven, and I think I love the challenge of just trying to figure out a space and what type of cuisine I want to serve there and how I'm going to do it. And his first cookbook is fresh off the press. I want them to get a sense of uh, my culinary journey. When you take a moment and you, know, you fast forward to where we are now and you look back at all that you've done, um, and what goes through your mind? I try to just look forward. For aspiring chefs and restaurateurs out there, he says there are no shortcuts. Learn it all, take the proper steps, and work your way up. That's not easy. No. <laughs> Would you do anything else? No. I think that's the big thing, but I wouldn't trade it for anything, and it's been really good to me. Many people call Charlotte a transplant city, but the city has a rich history. And people who've lived in the Queen City their entire lives may sometimes worry newer residents don't know as much about the city's history as they should. That includes the story behind the city's professional basketball team, the Charlotte Hornets. It's a team that had a name, lost it, and then got it back. For that, many people credit two brothers and their goal to bring back the buzz. I'm Scotty Kent. I am the co-founder of Bring Back the Buzz. And I'm Evan Kent, co-founder of Bring Back the Buzz. And we're the Buzz Brothers. <laughs> I had to do the gun, I couldn't help it. They may seem like two pretty laid back guys, but what you may not know about Scotty and Evan Kent is that they're mostly responsible for creating a sporting renaissance, if you will, in the city of Charlotte. The Hornets franchise was born in the Queen City in 1988. By 2002, the team's owner relocated it to New Orleans, making room for a new team in Charlotte called the Bobcats. And despite an impressive record on the court, 
the fan following was lacking. We met up and we were watching a Bobcats game and uh, over a few spirits, <laughs> spirits, <laughs> uh, started talking about how nobody in town really cared that the, the Bobcats at the time were in contention to make the playoffs. You know, it wasn't like this when we were the Hornets. Uh, somebody should do something about this. And they did. That night, coming up with the idea to build a website and a Twitter page called Bring Back the Buzz, a campaign meant to light up Charlotte's basketball scene and push for the NBA to bring the team's original name back home. Let's go Hornets! Let's go Hornets! Shortly after the birth of Bring Back the Buzz, plans were set in motion, and in 2013, the city got its name back, becoming once again the Charlotte Hornets. Bringing back the name Charlotte Hornets brought back not just the just the, the stories and the memories from the previous installment, but it also brought back a an identity that the city desperately needed. That identity from there on was grassrooted in the Bring Back the Buzz campaign. The brothers quickly grew from attracting fans on social media to captivating them through their podcast shows, which are broadcast today on Spotify and iTunes. We don't pull any punches. And it's always been about Charlotte Hornets, what's best for Charlotte, what's best for the Panthers. And if we have to ask the tough questions or if we have to be the bad guys, then we have no problem with be, like, being those people. And when they make it to a game in the Spectrum Center, they'll be the first ones to tell you they bring a certain intensity. Uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of passion. Um, we do tend to swear a lot. And while some may not comprehend the sheer amount of passion Evan and Scotty bring to the games, what they can understand is the love the brothers have for the city they grew up in. Realize that things like the Hornets name goes beyond just a basketball team. It's a culture and it means something to those who live here. Be Charlotte, embrace Charlotte, utilize Charlotte, use it as a resource, but don't abuse it. Despite a season of ups and downs and a missed shot at the NBA playoffs, the Buzz brothers have managed to raise a loyal fan base that sticks with the Hornets through and through. And it's all for the love of the team and Charlotte. Through the good and through the bad, we bleed teal and purple, and we want to get as many people in this city to do the same. Brothers Evan and Scotty Kent typically hold the city of Charlotte and Hornets fans accountable, often sharply encouraging them to support the team, especially during losing streaks and even in the offseason. It's a high-speed, hard-contact team sport, and it's 100% girl power. I'm talking about the Charlotte Roller Derby. Your 704 caught up with the Charlotte All-Stars during their first bout of the season. You've done a successful mini pass. It's unlike anything you've ever experienced. It's not any other sport with a ball. The Charlotte Roller Derby isn't new to the Queen City. I have been playing roller derby for almost nine years. But its underground following will tell you it's a sport that shouldn't be missed. Yeah! Even if you have to watch it with one eye open. The first time I saw someone hit somebody else, I was hooked. Dozens of female skaters dominate the roller derby courts here in Charlotte. It's a brutal sport where teams try to lap each other while avoiding blocks, hard hits, and bang ups. It's in my blood. It's in my blood. While roller derby in itself is rugged and sometimes painful, skaters are free to go the extra mile with colorful makeup, hair, and sometimes glitter. This day is about me and being different and being what I want to be, and I like glitter. Roller derby teams are made up of five skaters skating counterclockwise around a track. Each team has a designated jammer whose job is to lap the opponent while avoiding the blocker, a job easier said than done. My favorite part about being a blocker is laying people flat out on their back, just knocking them smack out on the ground. Charlotte Roller Derby draws a loyal crowd, and it's the ruthlessness that they love. Oh, the crowd loves big hits. And the skaters know a little interaction with the fans goes a long way. Uh, yeah, I make it rain a little bit, and I get it back. It's always the funnest part. Bout day or game day requires a lot of extra work and effort by the Charlotte Roller Derby. Skaters must show up early to lay down the flooring for their own track, also roping it off and setting course boundaries before the match. And after a bout, 
They're expected to pack up the floor and clean up, making bout day roughly 12 hours long. Thank you for training. It's a lot of work and even more play, especially when a bout begins. These skaters may seem tough on the track, but they skate for you, donating a portion of their sales to community charity groups. We work with community partners, so we try to find another nonprofit program, so a portion of our sales goes to them. From laying their own track to running the merchandise tables, these ladies do it all for the love of the game. Anyone can join the Charlotte Roller Derby, regardless of how well they skate. Check out Skate Charlotte. Classes are held two times a week, and the Roller Derby League is built out of that group as they slowly learn the basics of the sport. Charlotte's got a pretty big coffee scene, but what if you throw cats into the mix? It's an interesting business concept that's turning heads and saving lives in Noda. A closer look at these rescued cats, the homes they need, and the stories that surround them is next. Welcome back to Your 704. I'm Elsa Gillis here on top of the Sky Condos in Uptown Charlotte at Fahrenheit. It's a safe haven for homeless animals and caffeine addicts. Charlotte's first cat cafe is open in Noda, and already its existence has saved the lives of countless animals in danger of being put to sleep. I sat down with Mac Tabby Cafe's owner to find out where the idea came from and how fate has already intervened. Take a listen. I knew I could do more for the community, and I wanted to create a space where people were happy all the time. We all need a happy place, and if you venture up these stairs in Noda, you might just find yours. My mother thought it was my midlife crisis, <laughs> and maybe it was, I don't know. But we're, you know, I'm turning 40 in a couple months, and I just kept feeling this tug in my heart that there was something else I was supposed to do. So voila, owner Lori Conawalik opened up the Mac Tabby Cat Cafe. Half of it is a literal cafe with coffee. The other half, a cat oasis. So this is the cat cafe, the cat lounge. This is the cat lounge, that's what we call it. Okay. <laughs> we have the 12 adoptable cats on this space. You kind of have to watch where you step. Absolutely. That's a good problem They're to have, I think. Place. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. They also have local art for sale and live music. But the main focus is the cats. Every time one gets adopted, another feline moves in. And so far, that's happened 135 times. But yeah, we think about it like, you know, 135 cats were sitting in shelters or, you know, they might not have made it. Um, and now they're literally at home and enjoying life with their people. So that's, I think that's a big deal. Lori shared one example with us of a 12-year-old girl who wanted a cat for her birthday with two different colored eyes. She says the girl's mom told her it wasn't likely to find a rescue with that look. But one day, that's exactly who ended up at Mac Tabby and is now at home with that little girl. The cat that day was on the list to be euthanized. So this cat, I mean, it changed the cat's life. It changed this girl's life. It's the stuff that you just can't make up and you can't imagine that happens. But like that little girl will never forget her 12th birthday and this story of how this cat came into her life. And there are plenty more in need waiting for their own magical moment. Sit with the cat on your lap, drink your latte, and kind of peace out a little bit. It's really, it's just really enjoyable and peaceful in there. Mac Tabby Cat Cafe is open seven days a week. The team there suggests you make a reservation to spend time with the cats in the lounge area, but walk-ins are also welcome. Become your own bartender inside this beer drinker's oasis. We're walking you through the easy step-by-step -step process you'll need to know before heading inside of Charlotte's first self-serve tap room in a few moments. If you're going out in the South End neighborhood, it's not hard to find a place to grab a drink. But what about becoming your own bartender? Hoppin Brewery's tap room is entirely controlled by your wrist. With more than six dozen taps lining the walls, it's changing the way the city drinks. Take a look inside. Beer, wine, and good vibes. Come in and grab a cold one. Better yet, pour your own. Hoppin opened in South End on the corner of Winifred and Bland Streets back in December of 2017, becoming the first self-pour tap room in Charlotte. It houses 62 total taps with 50 different craft beers to choose from. The other 12 selections on tap include a catalog of wine and Prosecco. Hoppin's beer selection starts with a range of local Charlotte brews, but that's not all. We offer beers from all around the country, all around the world. 
you might be a little bit confused on how this all works the first time you step inside, but the staff is there to guide you through your first pour. Here's what you need to know before you go. After checking in with your ID, you're given a wristband that's attached to your name and credit card. You then grab a glass, tap your wristband to whichever tap you choose, and then pour as many ounces of beer or wine as you like. We get a lot of beer lovers, wine lovers, um, because they do have that option to, to, to try 12 different varieties of wine, to try 50 different kinds of beer when they come in here because they can pour an ounce or two of it. Once your glass is full, grab a seat. Hoppin has table and lounge seating split between two levels, an outdoor balcony looking toward the Charlotte skyline, and a spacious outdoor patio. Out back, you'll likely stumble across plates of wonton nachos, sliders, and wings being served from the Twisted Eats food truck. The food truck may be on wheels, but it's there to stay now that its owner has agreed to make it a permanent fixture outside the tap room. Stay for a drink and a meal, or come back for trivia every Tuesday night. Hoppin Brewery also hosts Music Bingo on Wednesday nights and live music each weekend. Love Hoppin's concept, but want something closer to home? Hoppin Brands has two other venues coming to Charlotte this year. Pin House in Plaza Midwood, which will feature duck pin bowling, and the studio in South End, which will be the first self-pour live music venue in the city. So remember, the next time you're in South End and in need of a drink, Hoppin is a great place to find beer, wine, and good vibes. It's one of Charlotte's oldest neighborhoods, but don't let that fool you into thinking it isn't home to some of the city's newest attractions and best kept secrets. The top five things you should do in Dilworth is next on Your 704. Bordering the white picket fences and historic homes of Dilworth is a pocket of wine bars, cozy restaurants and tucked away parks. It's a neighborhood where you get the sense that neighbors know one another, filling each other in on new things to do. We are doing the same for those of you who aren't as familiar with Dilworth with our top five list. Starting with number five on our list is a stop at this stunning and colorful sculpture in Lotta Park. Pieces of Charlotte's past are assembled here at the timeline. It's made from trolley tracks that were buried underneath East Boulevard in the 30s and discovered in 2009. We suggest you reflect on Charlotte's history while admiring the timeline sculpture before taking a stroll through the rest of the park. A visit to this Charlotte institution is a must, which is why it snagged the number four spot on our things to do in Dilworth list. Step inside Paper Skyscraper and you will be amazed at the sheer amount of knickknacks you could leave with. The store is filled to the brim with books, gifts, cards, and art, all of which are mostly Charlotte themed. Have friends visiting from out of town? Bring them to the Paper Skyscraper to convince them how great the city really is. The Summit Room lands at number three on our top things to do in Dilworth list. To be clear, the steepest climb to get into the dinner only restaurant is the short walk up the front stairs. Owner Dee Dee Mills decided to buy the spot just one day after hiking Mount Kilimanjaro. Once you're inside, prepare to be wrapped up in the at home taste of the Southern inspired menu. You can't leave without pairing the Summit Room's small plates with a specialty cocktail. Each drink, interestingly enough, has been named after the seven summits of the world. Neighbors know neighbors when they pop into the People's Market on East Boulevard. The market is a jack of all trades where you can meet colleagues for coffee or pop in to grab a six pack. And with a food menu where breakfast is served all day, the People's Market, well, they really know people. Peek around the corner when you're leaving the market and you'll spot a cocktail bar hidden away in a back corner. It's called the Queen and Glass. The juxtaposition of both of these places, which share a wall, makes a trip here number two on our list. Trees in full bloom, a seven acre lake, and an expansive jogging trail. Combine each of these things and you'll find Freedom Park, the number one place in Dilworth we suggest you pay a visit to. Freedom Park has a certain charm to it and somehow manages to pull people out from inside their homes, no matter the season, to enjoy fresh air. Travel further into the park and you may stumble across the Charlotte Nature Museum, a regional attraction that will really get you to appreciate the environment we all live in. To us, a day at Freedom Park is never a waste. Expect it to be packed as the weather warms up. 
Here's what you can expect to see next time on Your 704. It's called the greatest sport offer, so we went and gave it a try. Think you could handle an experience like this too? We went to iFly to do the test driving for you so you can make up your mind. For now, we're headed back out to talk to more of the city's entrepreneurs as they introduce us and you to some of Charlotte's most interesting spots. We'll see you next time. Until then, you can check weekend events from wherever you are by downloading the free WSOC TV app and clicking on the new Your 704 tab. And if you think you know which Charlotte spot we should profile next, let us know. Just shoot our team an email at staff at your704.com.